computer science teachers. Um, just to give you a bit of background information where I come from and what I mean, I'm a PhD student at the University of Potsdam, where um, I investigate physical computing and computer science applications because I believe that it has a lot of benefits for learners um, of computer science. And we started, like, Ralph, uh, who was my supervisor during my master thesis back then in Potsdam, and we started working on this topic almost four years ago and started thinking about how we could implement physical computing in schools. And um, so I do have this research framework, which also includes, as apart from any other, um, yeah, just parts in this framework, to integrate teaching in the whole research process. And so um, that's why this term is about teacher training. So like three and a half years ago, we um, had more or less found a gap between what, what happens in um, real world computer science and what happens in school computers. Actually, we have tiny and invisible computers everywhere. We use like automatically operated trains. We have vacuum cleaner robots at the moment now. We do have smart homes. We even in, in sports, we even call like and there are those um, interactions. Sorry. Is that home? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Hello? Yes, yes, yes. That's pretty loud now. Okay, so we've identified this gap that in schools the um, entry point of computer science is still this gray big box called personal computer, desktop computer, maybe nowadays laptops, but still it's this box that kind of is associated with computer science. And um, we, we also realized that this is not necessary today because with all the um, yeah, developments in, 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 uh, in microcontrollers and miniature computers which are affordable and which are very easy to use with the um, tools that have very new and creative ways of designing computing systems uh, in general and schools and this partly is also reflected by the MAKER movement. So those pictures here were taken at the MAKER in Munich two weeks ago. Um, they, these projects are all MAKER projects who are very deeply engaged in do-it-yourself stuff that is sometimes very usable, sometimes artistic, and all those projects, apart from crafting and, and uh, yeah, electronic skills, also include computing skills. And um, so what they are doing here is that they develop interactive objects or interactive systems, and in designing and creating those objects, they are engaged in physical computing, and this is what I'm talking about when I talk about physical computing. So those interactive objects, um, like for instance, this beautiful little dress that Tanaya is wearing here to attract the audience, or these, uh, this, this tiny greenhouse, which those makers were making, or musical instruments, um, as time scribbling robots, stuff like that. They all have sensors and actuators to communicate with the surroundings, which might just be the air around them, um, temperature, brightness, air pollution. It might be other interactive objects, it might be humans um, that talk to those devices. And they also have actual. If we implement this into schools, then we also can implement construction with learning in computer science education. And this is one of the main benefits that I see in um, doing physical computing in schools. So one of the very great advantages of physical computing is that students actually gain haptic experience, and thereby the, um, uh, the abstract concepts that they are learning in computer science that are usually represented virtually now become very um, concrete and very real. And um, yeah, in, in creating those real interactive constructions, which are applicable for embedded systems and ubiquitous systems that we have in our environments, they also learn in very authentic contexts, which is not always true if you, for instance, work in micro worlds where there are some kind of artificial problems to be solved, like moving ladybugs through labyrinths, for instance. Um, so we have this authentic context here as well. And um, yeah, in creating those objects, the students are also by, by their mind, but also in a physical way, so they can touch those objects, they can share them with their peers, they can show them around, and um, as Edith Eggerman put it in a paper where she reflected upon um, the ideas that Pepper had with constructionism, is that, um, and I'm citing her here, that connectedness rather than separation are powerful means of uh, gaining understanding, and this is exactly what happens in physical computing activities. So, yeah, the students in doing this, uh, these activities can dive into the role of in inventors and um, this way are connected to their artifacts, as I just said. 
Okay, we of course wanted to know if um, our ideas are actually applicable in schools, and that's why we run a lot of um, yeah, pilot project, projects in different settings. So I ran Arthi is saw that this is also done in very many other contexts all over the world. So we can now say that um, it seems to be very applicable, especially for computer science. And in parallel to that, we also included the teachers, as I said initially, and um, we teach a training days a year for computer science teachers. And um, in those settings, we usually have like 60 to 90 minute blocks to train those teachers or to, to provide them with professional development. And um, in this very restricted setting, we tried to yeah, bring the ideas of physics computing to the teachers to then allow them uh, to take those ideas and design their own lesson plans and um, yeah, based on the, the particular needs that they have. And um, given these conditions that we have here on this slide, we've trained about 250 teachers throughout the last years high school teachers, vocational school teachers, university teachers, not necessarily computer science teachers, but most of them were. And um, we also evaluated those workshops with two aims. One aim, of course, was to improve those workshops and to actually fit them to the teachers' needs. And another aim was then later to develop a longer workshop which um, uh, was run last year. And from those evaluations, which we have done in group interviews with the teachers and discussions and um, feedback questionnaires and in uh, just observing them throughout the process of those workshops, we gained some very rich results, I would say. Um, some of them were surprising, others were quite obvious. So um, in the beginning, we noticed that teachers have very little experience in physical computing. So they might own a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino and have maybe done a blinking LED project, but they have rarely, most of them never used it in the classroom and have no idea what to do with it, um, except for like those startup projects that you find in the um, yeah, accompanying books of those tools. We also noticed that um, physical computing seems to be quite intimidating to many teachers, because they have this preconceived notion of having to fumble with those tiny wires on breadboards and having to know a lot about electronics and circuitry. And they are often very surprised to see that they do not actually have to have this knowledge, but that they can use those tools um, very creatively, even without this particular knowledge. And this also leads to a very important issue, which is time. So in those kind of objects, so they, they got a feeling for how the hard and software work together, but only very few actually created something that was meaningful to them. Um, what was also important, and I'm trying to rush through a bit because of the time issue that we have, they really liked um, the, the hands-on activities, so they really wanted to do the stuff that they were, do, we, uh, that we were providing them with. And um, yeah, they, they take home concrete ideas and examples. So they do not, at least the majority, the majority of them doesn't um, abstract from what they learn in the workshop. So they take the materials and want to implement them one-to-one <coughs> -to -one in their classrooms, which is a bit of a problem because we run the workshops based on my interactive garden, which is a learning and programming environment which comes together with a construction kit that we have developed at our university. And this one's not for sale. So the teachers in the end were uh, often quite frustrated to um, yeah, not be able to buy this kit. And um, we shifted them to other hardware that was available and provided them with um, this hardware so that in the end they went happy, uh, happily home and used that stuff. Okay, and like the, the most uh, interesting part is this one down here. Physical computing has made it to school. So when we compare the data that we've got very recently, um, we see that teachers actually come with very clear uh, expectations to our workshops. Why two years ago or three years ago, um, most of them didn't even know what physical computing is. So um, the, the gap that we've identified is actually less and less of a real problem also partly because um, physical computing has already made it to some curricula. So for instance, in England's CAS curriculum, it's very uh, deeply uh, involved in, in computer science. And also in the, and this one affects us very particularly as I'm working in this region, uh, in the new curriculum for computer science that we have in Berlin and Brandenburg, which will be effective by 2017, if I'm not mistaken, uh, mistaken, we have physical computing in there as well. And this now leads to a new kind of well, not really a problem, but maybe a challenge. Um, maybe the teachers often do not really know how to teach and what to teach in this particular domain. So there's a need for professional development, 
And um, we of course then ask ourselves, okay, what is it that we have to teach them and, and how do we teach them? And um, yeah, those of you who have attended uh, Ivan's um, keynote yesterday night recognize this tiny rabbit here, which I found very interesting because I <laughs> immediately found the same thing in our objectives for our professional development. Because the content part, which he splits into computing tool and pedagogy, it's also, well, I call this content here, but we also found that we have uh, content tools and pedagogy to teach to those teachers. Because we implement the ideas of constructionist learning, we introduce the teachers to um, the ideas of embedded systems, of physical computing, and we also try to bring our teaching principles to them. And these are just the three dimensions that are listed here. So content-wise, um, many things are now no longer discussed, discussed on a theoretical level, but actually done in class. And this, this, of course, involves the teachers have to familiarize themselves with new tools. And that's both on the hardware and on the software side, which is quite a challenge for many. And, and yeah, concerning the pedagogy, teachers have to abandon traditional teacher roles. Many of them already are in this process and are very good teachers um, in, in this kind of sense, but still they have to become learning facilitators and they have to get rid of means to be a constructionist teacher. But there are some things that are quite clear and um, yeah, we're trying to integrate that into our approach as well. Okay, and then we of course wondered how we could um, do that. <laughs> And we've looked into different approaches towards professional development, and um, I think there are quite a few from, from people who are already uh, are also here at this conference. So, for instance, Gary Stader has identified um, factors that lead, lead to success in professional development in constructionist settings, which are very much similar to the experiences we have gained at our workshops. So, you have to give them a good and gender neutral prompt. Um, like little challenge that they have to solve. Um, you, you want them to go through the constructionist process of learning themselves before they actually can teach in a constructionist way. And this is also backed by the Bridge 21 activity model, which um, Karina, uh, who is sitting in the back, so if you have any questions about that model, you ask Karina, uh, has reported about yesterday a bit. And uh, we've heard about technocentrism, which we are trying to avoid. And there are also lots of other things that kind of integrate into our framework that we've developed then. And um, one of those things is that it's very more as construction is to make the material and the ideas visible to others and to discuss them with the peers. So um, this is the framework that we have then developed for our longer workshop that we were doing. So this is a framework for constructionist professional development and I put this on physical computing in brackets because I personally think that this is applicable to many other areas of constructionist teaching as well, not necessarily only in computer science and particularly not only in physical computing. And um, I will explain the single parts in a second just to make you aware of those two boxes. So the green box is what is actually happening in this teacher training set setting in the concrete, concrete workshop. And we have this blue box here, and this is what's happening in school. So the teachers then are supposed to implement the ideas they get from the workshop. And then there is this network node here, which connects the workshop participant to the school settings of all the teachers. And there is this follow-up bubble here, which means that the workshop conductors have the, um, yeah, the, the, the uh, opportunity and also the duty, more or less, to keep contact to the teachers in order to make this a successful approach. Okay, I'm now going through the um, single notes. So I hope you can read it, it might be a bit too small, but um, uh, we have, as the very first and uh, as the first and very important thing, we have uh, the idea of motivating and exciting the teachers. And what we're doing there is basically to give them examples, to let them experience what, well, what, what, what benefits physical computing brings, what they have as possibilities towards um, computer science, introduce them to the tools, introduce them to the didactic uh, ideas behind that, and do that without overwhelming them with input. So just reduce it to the maximum minimum, so to say. And then, and this is like the, the um, longest part of groups, to work on their interactive objects, to work on classroom material, to also exhibit what they have done in those workshops, to just share that, to um, gain the sense of experience that I think is so important for them and for everybody who was, or wants to do physical computing projects. Um, we give a lot of help and support because we've also noticed that during the workshop when teachers came to technical issues, they were quite often 
pretty fast frustrated and could just give up. So we're trying to empower them to solve those problems when they run into them because they are just not available and they will happen in the classroom when, we, when you work with hardware and this, uh, with software. Um, we want them to share and discuss their ideas, to network, I think I said that already. And um, yeah, we want to follow up with the teacher. And I, I think that this is a really important point because if you just provide them with professional development and let them go and do not listen to what they have experienced, then they might not even implement it at all. But if you go back to them and ask them um, for uh, their experience, they feel valued and they uh, um, yeah, just integrate into the whole research process. Okay, so um, just very short, we implemented this in a two-day workshop which was sponsored by the Google CS4Hs program and um, read through all of those um, little bundles. So here you can see just some pictures of what I have just explained concerning the motivation and exciting uh, part. Um, yeah, we, we made them work together in groups of interest. That was also very interest, uh, important because we had such an heterogeneous group with various contexts and various interests, so we put them together and let them work on what was particularly important for themselves to really make them see themselves as part of this team. Um, we had sessions where we discussed what um, was developed and also the ideas for curriculum that were um, emerging from the progress. Um, we provided them with some online space, nothing very fancy. We might work on that for the next workshop. And we had a very, yeah, very rich final discussion in the very end, which, um, like we, we, for instance, we discussed that this amount of tinkering and crafting might possibly overstrain students or take too much time from actually learning computing principles, or if this is exactly what makes this approach interesting, um, like to balance the activities between crafting and arts and uh, electronics and computing and programming. And there were lots of ideas concerning methodology and, and, and topics to teach. And um, what was stressed very often was the benefit that in physical computing, you can actually see what the device does that you're creating in this process. Okay, so um, throughout the whole workshop, we just gave many opportunities for networking to the teachers. And um, are also planning another workshop this May to connect them back to each other in person because this approach of um, building an online community afterwards did not really work out very well. So there were only very few emails to, to all of the participants, but the teachers keep contact with me, probably mainly because I prompt them to and I'm asking them what they're doing, but also because I provide them with material, I provide them with the construction kits for their um, pilot projects, and in turn I get very valuable data. So they. Um, allow me to interview them and their students, they allow me to uh, yeah, come visit them in their classrooms and um, realize projects this school year and uh, more have been asked to do that very soon. Um, I think I said all that already. So to quickly <laughs> conclude, um, from, from the experience that we have gathered in those shorter workshops and also in this long workshop, which was based on this model that I just presented, we can now conclude that when you offer such constructionist workshop environments and um, yeah, professional development where teachers are allowed to follow their own interests and to um, work towards their particular needs, then the chance of affecting their actual teaching is a lot higher than an instructional training. And um, yeah, so they, they are very well engaged in um, uh, preparing environments where their students can learn creatively and in a constructionist way. And this was one of the main goals that we had to help the teachers develop their own settings that are applicable for physical computing and computer science. And of course, this way the students now actually um, learn in constructionist settings and in a very creative way about interactive systems and also with interactive and embedded systems, um, just as their teachers did in the workshops. Okay. So we have time for questions. Questions. So this sort of follows from the big conversation that happened in the last few hours, but I'm curious about the relationship between the tools and the pedagogy and whether you found like you said that a lot of teachers come in and they're already like very strong teachers and they have strong pedagogy. Um, do some teachers come in sort of resisting this? You mentioned that some people are sort of like, oh, this takes away from the 
time for actually learning the concepts? And then do you find, or do you maybe even have any way that you can imagine like gathering evidence on whether the teaching with these tools themselves actually helps develop pedagogy in people who have not prioritized that before? Um, well, well, one thing I'm really interested in, so I have very little, um, uh, um, what did you put the word that you mentioned, it says, um, so very little uh, people who say, no, I don't want to do that. Um, there are like one or two in those short term workshops, but um, they often experience this and then afterwards come to me and say, oh, well, actually, I would never do that. So I also, in this larger two day workshop, we had teachers who said, oh, well, this crafting stuff is not for me. But um, then they implemented it, and then they found that their students actually engaged a lot more than they were doing, uh, well, whatever other type of teaching, and um, appreciated it a lot. And they still said, like, I have one of those teachers who came to me in the interview afterwards and said, oh, well, you know, all this drafting, it's really not my cup of tea. But, okay, I let my students do it. I don't like it, I will never do it, but the students, they really love it, and that's why I'm doing it. And, um, I mean, that's just a single opinion, and I do not have all the teachers of the world, and I only have those who are actually interested in this topic. But yeah, we've got these positive effects every now and then. But it's not like real big evidence. Thanks on that. Like, does the tool emphasize the pedagogy behind it? And, and we see, especially in the form of education, like tons of constructionist tools in schools. Lego Mindstorms is all around. Yeah. Micro worlds and computer science education. Carol and Robert, uh, uh, Carol the Ladybug, uh, we have them in Bavaria in every single school. None of it. In 99% is used in a constructionist way. And again, we, we keep talking here about tools. Here, we have a new tool developed, we have a new programming language developed. Not the tool alone helps us to bring the constructionist idea into the schools. So this is why I think this, this, this workshop concept is, is so important to have the teachers uh, um, give them the experience of constructing by themselves, learn it themselves, because only if you experience yourself how much it motivates and excites you, then actually you will uh, also use it uh, with the kids in school. And uh, yeah, this is where I think we, we need to work more on. Any other questions, comments, reflections? <laughs> Well, what, you? You want to say something? No, no I, 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 I agree with it. It's, it's not a tool. It's what you do with it. I always have this analogy of giving someone a blank notebook and maybe they'll draw something or they'll write something. But if they're not inclined as a writer or as an artist, their notebook will be forgotten. Um, and it's what happens with the tools. It doesn't matter how good the tool is. If you don't have ideas and, and, and a context and an environment of how to use that and, and where to use it and all these things. And, and that's what's happening with all these quote unquote constructionist tools. There are 99% of the time not used to in constructionist way. Every yeah. tool gives a new chance. Yeah. And this is what we actually need. And, and that's why teacher training is so important. 